Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. And I have to say, without any false modesty, that I've gotten fairly good now at propagating plants from cuttings. This wouldn't be much of a business without it. Substantially now, everything in my greenhouse here, all of the stuff behind you, all the stuff on the floor, elsewhere in the greenhouse, is all propagated from cuttings. And I actually make a pretty reasonable income selling the resulting plants. So this wasn't always the case, I have to be upfront. Uh, early on, I struggled an awful lot with it. And although the topic may have been, how do I succeed in growing plants from cuttings? Really the question I was asking was, why do I keep on failing? When you see the plants dry out, when you see the plants begin rotting from the base up, that black stem coming up from the base of the soil, you wonder, what did I do wrong? I'm gonna break those failures up into three basic categories. Number one is choosing the wrong plant or the wrong stage of growth. So it all comes down to the source of the plant. Number two comes down to technique. How do you make that cutting? And number three, it comes down to the growing environment and all three are equally important in deciding whether your plant will dry out, whether it will rot, or whether it will root and shoot in that order and make a successful cutting. Let's have a look at some of the failures and then we'll work forward to some of the successful ways of doing this. So I have two cuttings here and the first one you can see is still quite firm and plump and green with those red buds on it. So it's, it's actually holding moisture quite nicely. But as I move downwards, you can also see that from the base is that telltale black rot that's moving up the stem. And a little further up here, you can see that thorn on the right hand side is starting to darken around that. It's just working its way up the stem. It will kill the entire cutting, ultimately. Move over to the right here, you can see that basically the opposite is true. The stem is uh, plump and green at the base. It even has some leaves emerging from that bud on the right. So I have every reason to believe that it's uh, developing roots down below the surface. However, up above, at some point or another, it just wasn't enough moisture to maintain that section of stem up to the next node. So the plant died back in that section. Now, early on, you can definitely take some clues from the way that your cutting fails. Typically, if it's rotting, you would interpret that as too moist, too much humidity, too still of air, uh, and maybe not enough temperature. Um, that might be the way you would interpret it, depending on how your setup is. If you look over to the right there, and if it dries out, you might interpret that as too little moisture, uh, too much air movement, and too much temperature. So if you're balancing out your, your growing conditions, that might be the way you interpret it. But it is important not to read too much into that, because ultimately, if your cuttings are going to fail, it's going to be in one of these two modes. Either it will dry out before it rots, or it will rot before it dries out, but it's gonna do one of those two things if it's not going to succeed with developing roots and then shooting after that. So then it begs the question, what are the conditions that make it most likely that your plant will succeed in rooting quickly before it suffers one of these two fates? Let's get right down to the root causes here. Cause number one why your cuttings may fail is you're choosing to take cuttings of a very difficult variety or you're taking cuttings of a variety that root, would root better by a different method than the one you're using. And how would you know? You could go on forever trying to root a particular rose or a particular hydrangea from softwood or semi-hardwood or hardwood cuttings only not to know that it roots very easily from a different kind of cutting. For most of the macrophylla hydrangeas, I find, they take fairly easily for most stages, but uh, this year I found they take much, much better from tip cuttings than they ever do from semi-hardwood cuttings. Who knew? I didn't until I tried it. Um, so here's the way you could approach that. You could say, let's do it the hard way, you know, and you could start from A to Z, uh, Abelia to Zizifus, and try every stage of cutting and every kind of plant and really try out everything. Or you could do it the easier way, because let's face it, the propagation community has tried all of this before, and generally, they're very willing to share that information. If you go on to the culture guides for most of the major uh, uh, horticulture industry uh, partners, like Ball or 
um, Walters, they will give you culture guides that talk about the specifics of temperature, of humidity, of time in the tray and everything to make your cuttings. Or on the amateur end, a wealth of information. Uh, go to your Facebook groups, uh, those places like, um, uh, the probably the best one right now I find is uh, I Love Plant Propagation, which is Mike Kincaid's group. Uh, on Facebook and the people there are wonderful about sharing their propagation information because let's face it we're all geeks in this regard we all love trying new things and sharing our successes and maybe even our failures so uh, that's where you should start don't don't spend a lot of time on a plant uh, with just one method and keep on failing and never think to well am I using the wrong method am I picking things up at the wrong time of year. I can give you some specific directions or tips on this. And number one is that when in doubt, I usually start with semi-hardwood. I find that method to be adaptable along a wide range of perennials and shrubs. Um, there may be things that take a little bit better from softwood cuttings, but even if you can get it from softwood cuttings, you can usually get it from semi-hardwood as well. The second specific tip I'll give you on this is that in general, the uh, the better the condition, the more robust both the plant and the section of the plant you take the cutting from, the more likely it is to succeed. So if you're taking it from a very healthy plant and a very healthy section of a very healthy plant, you give yourself the very best chance. Second set of big reasons that could have to do with your success or failure comes down to the cutting technique itself. And although there are plenty of videos out there, including my own, where you can go and look up specific cutting techniques for different plants, here I just want to focus in on a few of the differences in technique that I think can make a big difference to your success or failure. So number one, start with a clean, sharp pair of pruners. Uh, clean and sharp because you don't want to be introducing any bacteria or fungus that will then turn into rot organisms on your cutting. And you also want a clean cut because if you crush the bottom of that stem, it's going to very much reduce your chances of success. In terms of what to clean it with, I used to say something more complicated, but simpler is probably better. Lysol is uh, readily available, not too expensive, and it won't rust your pruners. Uh, second thing that I will highlight is make sure that you take your cutting just below the node. The node is the place where the leaf comes out. I'll show you, I'll insert a clip here, but the further you go from that node, the further you are away from the tissue that can differentiate and create the callus at the bottom of your cutting. Even a quarter of an inch can make a big difference in uh, success or failure, so definitely target that. And the third thing I'm gonna highlight here is the use of rooting hormone, uh, which is in general, uh, for a softwood cutting or something in very active growth, it's a low level of rooting hormone. Uh, and for things that are in dormancy is a higher level of rooting hormone. But follow the directions because it can vary from variety to variety. Uh, I use it, it increases my success rate as I take my cutting. Some people try to substitute it with things like honey or cinnamon or bananas or apple cider vinegar or other things like that. And uh, although I can't say in every single case that I've tested these, the ones that I've tried have not been that successful. And there is very little objective or reviewed evidence that supports their use in the way that, uh, that rooting hormones themselves based on IBA will improve your success rate. So if you're looking for an edge, that's one place where you can get it. The final area I'm gonna cover in this video comes down to the growing environment of your cuttings. And really it comes down to controlling four variables once you've stuck those cuttings. Uh, you're controlling light, you're controlling temperature, you're controlling humidity, and you're controlling soil moisture. And it varies a lot depending on what stage your cuttings are taking. So if you're taking something in active growth, a softwood or a tip cutting, typically the higher the temperature, the higher the light level, the higher the moisture, uh, the soil moisture, the higher the humidity you're cutting will accept or even possibly need for it to root quickly and to get through to the next stage. Uh, if you're going to semi-hardwood cuttings, uh, choose something in the middle for all of those things. And for hardwood cuttings, uh, you're generally going to want lower temperatures, lower light levels, less humidity held around the plant, and less soil moisture. So those are your general variables and you're going to have to play with them a little bit to see what is most successful for you based on the feedback from your cuttings. As I said earlier, if you notice that a lot of your plants are drying out, that is wilting or shriveling from the top, 
then you may have to push your environment a little more towards the, the wetter. Whereas if you're finding that they are rotting from the base up consistently, that probably means you're gonna have to push the other way uh, out to a, a slightly drier, a little more uh, air circulation and, uh, and trying to cut down, or sorry, increase the heat a little bit uh, so that it doesn't rot uh, so quickly. So these are, your, these are your growing environment considerations. I definitely go through that in a number of my other videos, but I'll just leave it right there for now as to say, these are the common causes why your cuttings will fail. If you have any questions, drop those down below the video and I'll see what I can do to help. And thank you so much for watching today.